Good day everyone, this is another video lesson in APP and for this video, the lesson that I'm going to discuss is laboratory field and survey reports. For the lesson objective, at the end of the lessons, you'll be able to differentiate the parts and functions of laboratory field and survey reports. First, let's discuss laboratory report. A laboratory report provides a formal record of an experiment. The discussion of objectives, procedures, and results should be specific enough that interested readers could replicate the experiment. So this means that lab reports are documented in investigations or experiments conducted in a laboratory. It's important the methods and other aspects in experiment can be conducted by other researchers or can be replicated. Replication is one of the significant ways scientists build confidence in a scientific merit of results. When the result from one study is found to be consistent by another study, it is more likely to represent a reliable claim to new knowledge. And for the format, although most laboratory reports will include the following sections, some experiments will require different format. Tailor your report so that it adequately explicates your specific experiment. So the format of the laboratory report is consistent with other research articles, but Lab reports have different style in discourse or moves, but the most important is provide the sections that are necessary for your procedure. So first, there, so first there's abstract. It is a brief informational synopsis of your experiment, typically under 200 words. Strive to use informational or declarative rather than descriptive prose. So an abstract is a concise summary of a research paper or entire thesis. It is an original work, not an excerpted passage. An abstract must be fully self-contained and makes sense by itself without further reference to outside sources or to the actual paper. Its main purpose is to help other researchers and readers make a decision in selecting the readings. Second is introduction. It identifies experiment to be undertaken, explains its objectives and significance, and provides the background necessary to understand it. When appropriate, the background should indicate theoretical predictions. The introduction presents the background of the study research problem. Um, it also clarifies important variables, discuss its limitations, and specify its significance to the field of the study. Next is the procedures or the methods. The procedure section should provide readers with enough information that they could replicate your experiment if they so desire. So this is the section we're in the process of the experiment is indicated. This is a very important part since we can see how the researchers conducted their study. We can also confirm if the process can be replicated by other researchers when a similar study is being conducted. Next is results and discussion. It conveys results relevant to the goals of the experiment, analyzes the results, and discusses their implications, acknowledges possible sources of error, considers presenting information visually with graphs and tables, and provide figure captions. So you have to present a data commentary in this part. So you have to present the data, its explanation, analysis, implications, and conclusions. So you have to use related literature to support your analysis. And the construction of this section should answer the research questions and satisfy the objectives indicated in the introduction. Next is the conclusions. This section places specific results into the context of the experiment as a whole. If your laboratory report is short, the discussion section may serve as a sufficient conclusion. Evaluates the results in light of the objectives stated in the introduction. So this part of the report presents the primary deductions of the study based on the most significant results in the experiment. So your conclusion should be anchored in the objectives and research questions. And the last one is the appendices. This is the place to include data too extensive or tangential or to warrant exclusion in the main body of the report, but necessary as procedural or analytical evidence. So in this part, you have to present all the information about your study, including your data, the ethical procedures you underwent to conduct your study, such as consent letters and research instrument. Next is the field report. Field reports require the researcher to combine theory and analysis 
learned in a classroom with methods of observation and practice applied outside of the classroom. So field reports are studies conducted in the community where your respondents or participants reside. This means that you have to go to the community and conduct your study there. The purpose of field reports is to describe and observe person, place, or event and to analyze that observation data in order to identify and categorize common themes in relation to the research problems underpinning the study. So in order to clearly and fully understand your study, you have to be immersed in their community so that you can observe your participants' culture, of their way of life, their language, their lifestyle, and other aspects of their lives. So you can only understand your study if you will interact with them and have personal experience with them. How to approach writing a field report. First, field reports are most often assigned in the applied social sciences. Example, social work, anthropology, gerontology, criminal justice, education, law, the healthcare professions, where it is important to build a bridge of relevancy between the theoretical concepts learned in the classroom and the practice of actually doing the work you are being taught to do. So, field reports are usually used to understand people. That's why it is more prominent in liberal arts and social sciences field. It's like an immersion in the real world since you are engaging with people. First, systematically observe and accurately record the varying aspects of a situation. So, observe everything that is helpful for your study. You need to prepare a checklist and record. But you have to be careful when you take videos or record audios because there are communities wherein they do not allow some of the things about their culture, especially if they regard it as a sacred. When you conduct field studies in ethnolinguistic communities, you have to ask permission first. So data about people are confidential and sensitive matter. Thus, you have to build trust to them. Next, continuously analyze your observation. So you have to understand what you have observed, especially if it is very cultural and you cannot relate with it. Then deep comprehension is necessary. Keep the report's aims in mind while you are observing. While conducting the study, you still have to be mindful of your objectives. But it's also important at the same time to be sensitive with your participants. Consciously observe, record, and analyze what you hear and see in the context of a theoretical framework. So after all, you still have to base your analysis in your theoretical framework. So you have to stick with your theory when you evaluate and form implications and conclusions. Techniques to record on your observations. So you can do note-taking, video and audio recordings, illustrations and drawings, and how to write a survey report. A survey report describes a survey, its results, and any patterns or trends found in the survey. So most survey reports follow a standard organization broken up under certain headings. Each section has a specific purpose. Survey reports have structured survey instrument. This means that there's a validated organization of the questions indicated in the instrument. So survey reports usually use headings for each section. While there may be slight differences between reports, the headings are typically the same. The standard headings for a report are title page, table of contents, executive summary, background and objectives, methodology, results, conclusion and recommendations, and appendices. So as you can see, the contents and sections are still the same with lab reports and field reports. They only differ on the contents that you're going to provide in each section since they are different types of reports. And that's the end of the discussion. And I hope that you have learned something and see you on the next video.